Namaste. And welcome to our satsang. <clears throat> I will begin tonight with uh, some lines from Sapitri. <clears throat> Very important lines from the dream twilight of the earthly real. And Savitri speaks to death. It's a very powerful, very powerful passage. How sayest thou, truth can never light the human mind, and bliss can never invade the mortal's heart, or God descend into the world he made? If from a bodiless force matter was born, if life could climb in the unconscious tree, its green delight break into emerald leaves, <clears throat> and its laughter of beauty blossom in the flower. If sense could wake in tissue, nerve, and cell, and thought seize the gray matter of the brain, and soul peep from its secrecy through the flesh, how shall the nameless light not leap on men? and unknown powers emerge from nature's sleep. Even now, hints of a luminous truth like stars arise in the mind-mooned splendor of ignorance. Even now, the deathless lover's touch we feel if the chamber's door is even a little ajar, what then can hinder God from stealing in? Or who forbid his kiss on the sleeping soul? Sri Aurobindo is telling us something so important here. The chamber's door, of course, is the door to the psychic and the soul. If the chamber's door is even a little ajar, now what does ajar mean? Open. But not fully open. Not fully Only a, cracked open just a little bit. So if the chamber's door is even a little ajar, what then? can hinder God from stealing in, beautiful light, stealing in, or who forbid his kiss on the sleeping soul? Those last three lines have always been so important to me because we all have so many problems to be worked out. And it's a long process. And Sri, Sri Aurobindo often says that it will take many lives. But if the chamber's door is even a little ajar, what then can hinder God from stealing in? Or who forbid his kiss on the sleeping soul? Well, we continue tonight with... Uh, our study of Oroville. And we begin again with part five. I covered a little, but I want to go over it again. Mother says, each one has good reasons to support his own opinion. And I am no expert to judge between them. Look at the humility of the Divine Mother. I am no expert to judge between them. And then she says, but from the spiritual point of view, I know that with true goodwill, 
all opinions can be harmonized in a more comprehensive and truer solution. This is what I expect from the workers of Oroville. Not that some, way, some give way to others, but that on the contrary, all should combine their efforts to achieve a more comprehensive and perfect result. Well, when we first began in 1969-70 with the Matrimandia Gardens Nursery, I wrote to Mother and I said, Mother, many people want to come and work with us. They're very enthusiastic. May we have your blessings. Mother writes back in big handwriting. If people are willing to work in peace and harmony, there is no need for my blessings. That's how important she put it. If we could work in peace and harmony. <clears throat> so, the ideal of Oroville demands this progress. Don't you want to make it? Oroville wants to be the first realization of human unity based on the teaching of Sri Aurobindo, where men of all countries would be at home. This is already written in January 1972. And Mother then gives a message for UNESCO. Have any of you read this? Message for UNESCO. <clears throat> Oroville is meant to hasten the advent of the supramental reality upon earth. The help of all those who find the world is not as it ought to be is welcome. And then she ends with this powerful sentence. Each one must know if he wants to associate with an old world ready for death or to work for a new and better world preparing to be born. Well, that was in 72, 1st of February, 72. Powerful statement to UNESCO. I'll read it again. Oroville is meant to hasten the advent of the supramental reality upon earth. The help of all those who find the world is not as it ought to be is welcome. Each one must know if he wants to associate with an old world ready for death or to work for a new and better world preparing to be born. Well, that world is already here, that new world. The old one is preparing for death, fighting to stay alive, fighting to maintain its hold of darkness, but it also knows that its end is near. And how do we know this? Well, Mother says, these adverse forces, these Asuras, are also my children. And in Savitri, <coughs> Sri Aurobindo speaks of them weeping, seeing that their end was near. So why do we have these forces in the world? To spur us, to push us outside of our convenient little lives, to make us want to grow. So all the adversities are our greatest helpers.
interesting. Question to Mother. Many in Oroville say that an organized working is not desirable in Oroville. They are for spontaneous working. Mother. Spontaneous work can be done only by a man of genius. Is there anyone claiming to be a genius? Blessings. Orville wants to shelter people happy to be in Orville. Those who are dissatisfied ought to return to the world where they can do what they want and where there is place for everybody. This is already October 1972. And then this very strong statement. For those who have been taken into Oroville on a wrong statement of theirs, there is only one solution. It is to cure in themselves all falsehood. That is to say, all that contradicts in their consciousness the presence of the divine. And then again, same month, she says, the true spirit of Oroville is collaboration and must be more and more so. True collaboration paves the way to divinity. Well, you know that when we first came, I don't know if I told you this before, but two of the elder sadhaks would come out to us each week in the area that mother named peace. <clears throat> peace was where the Matrimandia would eventually be built. It was a large structure with casuarina poles and keep roof, and all of us had a small room there. And these two men, Arvinda Basu and M.P. Pandit, would come out regularly to tell us about the yoga. It's the first time any of them came out to Oroville. Now I'm talking 1970 to 1975, maybe five years, when Oroville was really beginning. I mean, Matrimandia didn't start till 72. And they were coming out. And <clears throat> we were allowed to ask them any question we wanted which was really extraordinary because with their rising far above the mind, they could answer any of our questions. Mother said there are three possible forms of greeting for those Oravillians who wish to use them. Our service de la verite, at the service of truth, and simply truth. Did you know that? That there were three? Eh? No. Anyone know that? No. I've seen the ring on the ring. It is oh, around the banyan? Yes. So that, at and the service of truth. Yes, it's the there. Service yes, of yes. But I think this to each other we could say? Yes. Isn't it wonderful? You could just greet each other with at the service of truth or truth. No. Or in French. Au service de la verte. 
It's so beautiful. Again, this was the end of October, 72. Now, there are four things Mother has said to this group of representatives of Oroville, mostly from uh, Ormadale. Harmony, goodwill, discipline, truth. And you know, people would lie to mother and she could see their lie as clearly as I'm looking at all of you. And she said to them, I can work with you only if you do not say a lie and are at the service of truth. The last day of October. And then, as I said before, and this is from Mother, before dying, falsehood rises in full swing. Still, people understand only the lesson of catastrophe. Will it have to come before they open their eyes to the truth? I ask an effort from all so that it has not to be. It is only the truth that can save us. Truth in words, truth in action, truth in will, truth in feelings. It is a choice between serving the truth or being destroyed. You see, ashram people, they used to tell mother, you know, tone it down a little bit. <laughs> it's too strong, mother, for people. But mother didn't. Just Im imagine what she is saying here. It is a choice between serving the truth or being destroyed. And she even said in one of her messages, I think you'll remember this, men, countries, continents, the choice is imperative, truth or the abyss. Again, powerful statement, the abyss. You know, at the very end, Mother differed a little bit from Sri Aurobindo in Savitri. And she said, I don't know if the current humanity will survive. We have the choice. It is a choice between serving the truth or being destroyed. 26 November 1972. Mother <clears throat> writes, Orville has been created for a progressive superhumanity, not for an infrahumanity governed by its instincts and dominated by its desires. Those who belong to the infrahumanity, the animal humanity, have no place here. Orville is for those who aspire for the supermental and make an effort to reach there. You see, most people have not read these things. We don't realize how strong Mother was. She's telling us always exactly how it is. She doesn't mince words. She says it like it is. <clears throat> 
those who belong to the infrahumanity, the animal humanity, have no place here. You know, once they wanted to start a zoo in Oroville. Did any of you know about this? I heard about that. Yeah. And Mother said, why would you want to do that? That belongs to the old humanity, <laughs> keeping animals in cages locked up. She would not allow it in Oregon. No zoo. And did she say about dogs and cats? Yeah. Also? She spoke very strongly about dogs and cats, but most people have not followed that. <coughs> she said no cats and dogs in Oregon. She did not want them in Oregon. Because again, <clears throat> there are many reasons. One of them is disease. Another one is attachment. Mm -hmm. We become so attached to our animals that, and I'm guilty of it too. I had two beautiful cats and watched them both die. And I know that one of them was ready for human birth. She was so conscious. And after that emotional outburst, I said, I never will again will have that feeling of attachment towards any animal. But I wasn't strong enough when my wife passed. And so I went through some years of grief. Now, this is about a cyclone on the night of 5th December, 1972. 5th December? Mother. It is a warning that nature is giving that those who do not have the true spirit of Oroville will have to change or to go if they do not want to change. Now that was just for Oroville. In the ashram, the first huge limb of the service tree was broken and it was facing south. Well, I was there, and it hurt me, and I saw them beginning to cut the branch in the wrong way. They were cutting from the top down to sever it, and if you do that, all the weight of the branch will tear the bark all the way down and probably kill the tree. Parichand was the gardener then, and I said to him, may I go up and show them how to cut the tree? Because I had worked with my father for years in landscaping and tree removal, tree pruning, I used to climb up to 100 feet high. So I showed them, and we did it together, we cut from the bottom up one third to meet the top cut, and it came off just like that. You can see it today, it's completely healed. It was a big cut, but it healed over. Now the beautiful story here for me is that immediately when I finished, Parichan came running to me and he said, this is a blessing packet from mother for you to take care of the tree for the rest of your life. Oh. I did it for 37 years and then politics took it away from me. But the last very severe cyclone that took the top of the tree out completely. 
that was much more recent, long after Mother had left. And I came and I saw the workers cutting with machetes the branches. And I brought my pruning saw, and I won't tell you what happened because it was so, so terrible. But I was forced to get down by people, or they said I would suffer for the rest of my life. I went to Manoj Dasgupta, the managing trustee, and I said, Manoj, there is a group of young men in Oroville who have been trained by a professional tree surgeon. His name is Juan, and he left. He had been pruning the trees in the outer gardens for three years, working with me in complete harmony. A wonderful soul. Now these young boys in their 20s came immediately when Manoj gave, Manoj gave me permission. And I stood up there with them and we lowered the logs down. Manoj came and looked, many people looked. And at the end, when the work was done, Kumud, who was mother's secretary, not secretary, she, how do you call it, mother's? Mm -hmm. Attendant. Attendant. attendant, mother's attendant, sent me two blessing packets and divine love flowers to put into the opening of the tree. And it was, we saved the tree. Since then, the tree has been declared a national heritage tree of India. Did anyone know that? <laughs> and so they came and they, they used huge, huge guy lines to support the branches and all. And so now the government has the responsibility as a heritage tree. Unfortunately, prior to that, I felt that the tree was in danger. And I went to Vishwanath and I said to him, will you do a drawing making the same types of pillars, but much higher so that they could support the upper branches? And he did this. And on the Monday trustees meeting, we brought the design to them and explained that this needed to be done to protect the top of the tree. They were very courteous and they thanked us and they did nothing. And so the break happened. You know, it's the most sacred tree in the world. There is no more sacred tree. Mother saw that tree be planted. She guided them in planting it. I believe it was Udar and maybe Juman who planted it. And it has shaded probably millions of devotees who have come to the Samadhi for so many years. The second most sacred tree in the world? You can guess, no? Banyan. Yes. Banyan. <laughs> Our banyan, yes. Mother says, everybody has to progress and become more sincere. Oroville has been created not for the satisfaction of the egos and their greeds, but for the creation of a new world, the supramental, expressing the divine perfection. And again, Orville has been created for a superhumanity, 
for those who want to surmount their ego and renounce all desire to prepare themselves for receiving the supermind. They alone are the true Aurelians. Those who want to obey their ego and satisfy all their desires belong to a subhumanity and have no place here. They must return to the world, which is their true place. Father, again, do all those who are telling lies by the simple fact that you are telling lies, you prove that you do not wish to be true Aurevillians. If you wish to remain in Auroville, you must stop lying. Again, to be a true Aurevillian, one must never lie. Just imagine the Divine Mother at this point, December 1972, is working on the transformation of the body, the transformation of her cells. And when she had transformed certain cells, she said, all who are ready, those cells will be transformed in their bodies also. And on Monday, I was asked to give a talk on my experiences with Nolini. And I don't know if I've shared that with you before, but I would like to do it again tonight if I, if I have. It was 1979. Did I tell you this? Mm -hmm. No. No? My birthday. And we went to see Nolini. We brought him a huge tray about that big, filled with 100 different flowers of psychological perfection. 100. Mm -hmm all colors, all shapes, because I had collected almost 300 trees of different varieties. He welcomed us. He said, sit down, all seats are equal. And there were only two chairs. So we sat down, Mary Helen and me. And he said, Anima, that was his secretary, be sure to give them the tray back. Mm -hmm. And then he looked at me. I had written him a two-page typewritten letter, single-spaced, on the problems of Oroville. And there were many problems in those days, as you're all aware. <clears throat> Maybe you're not, but... He said to me, I have read your letter. It need not be like that. She is trying a thousand different ways. So poignant because mother had to try a thousand different ways to bring this harmony. Then he became very quiet and he looked at Mary Helen and he said, your body. And then he looked at me and he said, and your body. 
And then he pointed to himself and he said, and my body. We think they are different bodies. They are not. They are all her body. She has put a part of herself into each of us, truly. I have never heard anything more beautiful or powerful than that since Mother left. We are all Mother's body. Can we see it? Can we feel it? Can we live it? Can we be so aware that it's her body? We do nothing to harm it. We exercise. We keep the body in good condition. We eat properly. Obviously, we don't smoke, we don't drink drugs, we don't drink alcohol, all these things. He said so much in those few words. We think they are different bodies. They are not. They are all her body. She has put a part of herself into each of us, truly. And I can tell you that she continues to do this. The fact that she's not in the physical body anymore actually makes her freer to be all over the world at once, not just looking after the ashram in Oroville. And she has put a part of herself into each of you. You can be certain of that. Question to Mother. Is Orville the only solution to the misery of mankind and the disorders of society? This is very interesting because Mother says, not the only solution. It is a center of transformation, a small nucleus of men who are transforming themselves and setting an example to the world. This is what Oroville hopes to be. As long as egoism and bad will exist in the world, a general transformation is impossible. So we see that there is not going to be a general transformation. The world is too full of evil. So what is going to happen as the supermental grows in strength arising from the earth is that a small group of people will begin to become transformed. Now, those people are still, they've still been born of a mother. This is not the supermental body. Mother said it's the surom. She spoke of the surom and George Van Vreckham in his books is very clear on this. So there will be transitional beings progressing all the way to the supermental transformation. How long will it take? Seems like a long term 
a long time in human years. But Sri Aurobindo said maybe 300 years is possible. And what did he say? He said, I will return in the first supermental body built in the supermental way. That means without human birth, a body that will be formed by the consciousness of the realized soul. A body that mother says will be neither sex, sexless. A body that will not need to eat food, but can take directly from the air all the sustenance it needs. The first sign, she says, of the supermental will be power. Why do you think it will be power? Any ideas? Because it has to survive against the backlash of the darker forces. Love will be there, no doubt, but the first sign will be power. So we're coming to the end, and I'll read the last part of this. What Political organization do you want for Oroville? Mother says, an amusing definition occurs to me, a divine anarchy. But the world will not understand. Men must become conscious of their psychic being and organize themselves spontaneously without fixed rules and laws. This is the idea. For this, one must be in contact with one's psychic being. One must be guided by it. And the ego's authority and influence must disappear. We will continue next week with this extraordinary document of the Divine Mother. Because when we all first came to Oroville, it was so new. It was something that was I guess in our souls, we wanted this new world. We were looking for a new world. And none of the experiments had succeeded. There were many, many communes that were formed, wonderful communes, um, all over the world. Theosophical Society, um, the one in Scotland. Uh, so many of them had formed and when the leader died, they died out. Maybe they lasted 20, 25 years. Orville's already passed 50 years. But it has not gotten too far yet. There's a long way to go. But we will get there. You can be sure of that. Namaste. Let's just take a minute of silence.